Following on from my video yesterday, may I present to you the long form view of the top 10 DPS stats that influence your total DPS in the division. Stick around. Guys, welcome back. It's Vesp here from skillup.gg. Many of you would have seen my video yesterday detailing the top 10 stats that will buff your DPS in the division. Uh, this is a follow-up video to that. That was a very abridged view of uh, the top 10 stats and I was really trying to power through it so that people could just have a quick glance at it. But in this video, I'm gonna take a lot more time to explain how I came to those conclusions, explain some of the math that sits behind that. So um, just as a bit of a warning at the front end, this is a long video. It is pretty detailed. So uh, only stick around if that, if that sort of thing really interests you. Otherwise, go and check out the short form version of this video that lists the top 10 DPS stat priorities that you should be focusing on when the division goes live. Guys, if you find this video useful, please drop a like and drop a subscribe. We'd love to have you around. And with that, we'll get started. So before we begin, there are two important concepts that I want to discuss, and they are DPS versus effective DPS. And they're really important to understand in the context of this discussion. DPS is very straightforward. DPS is what you see on your character sheet. It stands for damage per second, and it is the theoretical amount of damage that you could put out every second if every one of your bullets connect. Now, of course, the lived reality of this is very different. If you are firing an assault rifle at a moderate range, you are probably going to miss quite a few of your shots due to the huge amount of recoil on that weapon. And that's where we get to this concept of effective DPS, which is actually how much damage are you going to be doing under normal circumstances. And that's when things like stability and uh, uh, initial bullet stability and horizontal bullet stability and optimal range, that's when these stats actually become extremely important. And these stats are not reflected in the DPS calculation. So DPS that you see on your character sheet does not take into account all of those other stability style stats. Accuracy is reflected in that calculation and we'll come back to that later, but stability is not. So it's really important to understand that you shouldn't just be shooting for maximum DPS all the time thinking that that's all that matters. You really need to find a good balance between DPS on your character sheet and effective DPS enabled by appropriate stability for your weapon. But in this video today, we're not gonna be chatting about any of those stability style uh, mods or stats. We are purely focused on the 10 stats that actually do influence the DPS that appears on your character sheet. So they're the ones that we'll be looking at today. So first up, we have hip fire accuracy. Now this is a stat that appears on your under barrel mounts, your handles, your grips, whatever you wanna call them. And it's a stat that reduces the amount of spread that occurs on your reticle when you are hip firing. And hip firing is when you are just pulling the trigger of the weapon without aiming down sights. So this is a pretty useless stat, to be honest with you. You really don't wanna be um, hip firing your weapon very often unless it is a shotgun. And at which point, you know, shotguns, you're really only gonna be using them very close range anyway, where you're really not gonna see a lot of benefit out of that hip fire stat. So interestingly enough, this stat actually does buff damage on your DPS sheet but use with caution. Uh, I'm not sure why this would be the case. I'm unsure why this appears in the damage formula. I think it's a bit misleading. So for the purposes of truly trying to max out effective DPS on your character, I'd really steer clear of this one. So next up, we have the elusive accuracy stat. Now in a previous video, I spoke with Frederick Thylander, the lead weapons designer of the division, and he informed me that accuracy relates to the spread of your reticle as you are aiming down sights. It's how big that reticle gets, uh, how quickly it gets large, and how quickly it shrinks back down again. So this all makes sense at this point, but the question is why is accuracy part of the DPS calculation where stability is not? They are essentially measuring exactly the same thing in different ways and stability is excluded from the damage calculation. So why is it that accuracy, when I put on an accuracy mod, my DPS goes up? So for now, this is a bit of a mystery, but what is clear is that accuracy definitely does help you. It helps your effective DPS. That is forgetting about character sheet damage this stat will increase your effective DPS because you are going to be more likely to hit the target that you are aiming at. So it's a decent stat to go for, but it's certainly not going to transform your world, especially if you are quite good at aiming at your targets, especially if you're using a keyboard and mouse where it's a hell of a lot easier to do that. So that's why this stat sits fairly high on that list at number nine. So next up we have at number eight, the reload speed stat, which is pretty self-explanatory. It basically speeds up 
the amount of time it takes for you to reload your weapon. And this is a really good stat in PvE, for instance, where you are going to be really firing off a lot of rounds um, and reloading consistently. So again and again and again, you are reloading your weapon while you're trying to bring down these very high health enemies. Um, in the PvP context, in the Dark Zone, it's probably less valuable, considering that in most encounters, if you are 1v1ing someone, you're going to be really emptying your clip and then probably switching to your secondary if they've still got plenty of health and maybe if they're below 30% health switching to your pistol. So in terms of the net impact that this has on your DPS calculation, it's definitely noticeable. You can see it, but it's a lot less noticeable than others. But there is actually a larger consideration here when we think about reload speed and it's a pure statistical and numerical one. And that is if I'm reloading at 2.9 seconds and I get a 5% reduction in reload time, all I've taken is 5% off 2.9 seconds. And most of the time, I'm probably going to be behind cover when I do that anyway. So, so the overall sort of efficacy or impact of that, that 5% that decrease in reload time is really, really minimal. You know, uh, you're probably not going to feel that in terms of the effective DPS that you're able to put on a target. At number seven, we have rate of fire, which is very straightforward. Again, it's simply about how quickly can our weapon fire all of the bullets out of its clip. So you have a stat here on your character sheet that reads RPM and that's rounds per minute. There's some math that sits behind that in terms of normalizing that out to a per second value, but you can do it. And the point is that this stat will make it so your bullet fires, uh, your gun fires bullets faster, which is a really good stat to have. It definitely boosts your character sheet DPS. And in PVP settings, this is a particularly good stat to have because again, you want to try and put out a maximum amount of damage possible in a PVP setting. In the Dark Zone, you want to burst down your, your opponent really fast. And so if your weapon can fire off more rounds than your opponent's weapon in a 1v1 encounter, you are probably going to win that encounter. So that's why this is a decent stat that sits at number seven on our list. At number six, we have headshot damage. Now this obviously is going to change in terms of its relative value based upon the type of weapon that you're using. And of course, I'm talking specifically about marksman rifles, which have a huge amount of bonus headshot damage anyway, and they are designed to be used in such a way that you are constantly aiming for headshots. So the relative value of this is going to change if you are someone that prefers headshots. Definitely prioritize this stat more heavily if you are someone that is using marksman rifles very often. For all other weapon types, this sees very limited value for us. If we're talking assault rifles, submachine guns, LMGs, shotguns or pistols, we are probably not going to be aiming for the head all that often. Uh, we are going to be missing a majority of our shots if we're dealing with those high rate of fire, high recoil weapons. So for that reason, this stat sits here on our list at number six. Related to the above, we have number five in our list, critical hit damage. And this is a stat that increases the bonus damage that we get when we score a critical hit. Now, again, this has a hugely different value depending on the type of guns that you are, or the gun that you are using. Submachine guns have a lot of base critical strike chance, right? So they are going to crit a lot more than a lot of other weapons because that's built into the weapon type. They do crit more than other weapons. So if you are using a submachine gun, then critical hit damage is going to be extremely useful to you because it's going to buff your damage a lot more. If you're using, say, for instance, an assault rifle, then it's not going to have that much of an impact because assault rifles do not have any bonus critical strike chance. It's important to note that critical strikes and headshots are different. So don't think that if you're using a marksman rifle and you get a headshot that you're getting benefit out of the critical hit damage bonus. You are not. You're only getting benefit out of that headshot damage bonus that we spoke about just a moment ago. So this, this critical hit damage is going to be a fantastic stat in the future when we are able to get enough critical on our weapons where it becomes a really important part of our base damage. This is going to have a huge impact because it is a multiplier on our critical hit chance, right? So anyone that's played Diablo, for instance, knows how powerful this stat can be when it's stacked up at really high gear levels. When you really get your crit going, it's fantastic. But at lower gear levels, um, and especially on, on weapons that do not prioritize crit, such as, well, everything other than an SMG, this is probably gonna be a very limited use stat, and that's why it sits at number five in our list. Next up, we have critical hit chance, which sits at number four on our list. Critical hit chance, very straightforward. How likely is it that when you fire a bullet, when that bullet hits, it will be a critical strike against the enemy and do bonus damage, just like any other game you've ever played ever. So here's the thing, right? This is obviously a really good stat in both PvE settings and PvP. In PvE, it's just a straight buff to your damage. 
you know, more shots that crit, fantastic, that's great. In PvP though, it's a bit of a game changer because if you can stack enough crit, right, and you can crit your opponent hard, you can really burst them down pretty quickly if, if, if luck is on your side. And, and I would just say, watch this stat. The majority of PvP games that I've ever played have had some sort of modifier in place with regards to crit on enemies or on, on, on other player enemies because the power of critical strike in determining PvP encounters is really massive and it could become quite sort of obnoxious if it's not managed correctly. So a lot of games, so for instance, World of Warcraft, bring in stats in that sort of um, look to mitigate the effectiveness of critical strikes just to reduce the amount of variance that you see in PvP encounters and they become a little bit more predictable. Now there's no such stat as that in the division at this point. There's no critical hit reduction stat. So I'm kind of guessing that when it comes to the dark zone that critical strike is going to be super important and I will definitely be stacking the hell out of that at the beginning to see what that's like. So watch this space and I really expect that we'll see some further movement in terms of how this stat works and then specifically how it works in PvP contexts. At number three, we have the weapon damage that is applied to specific weapon types from our gloves. So many of you probably don't know this, but if you have a look at your gloves, you will notice that many of them will increase the amount of damage that you do per bullet with your uh, with a certain type of gun. So I did test this, I can confirm that it is a straight addition, it's a flat increase to your per bullet damage, which is actually quite large. So I mean, I was doing about 460 uh, damage per bullet with my gun when I was using it, and I had a pair of gloves that was buffing that in the area of around 22 to damage. So that's a decent sort of, you know, nearly 5% increase in damage just from wearing a pair of gloves. I'd really recommend, um, you know, chasing down a pair of gloves that work for the chosen type of weapon that you're choosing to, to run with. It can have a really massive impact on your DPS. Uh, it's a, And it's a straight up buff. You know, there's no complications to it. There's no question of effective DPS versus DPS. It's just a straight up increase in, in damage. So definitely prioritize this stat. Definitely chase a pair of gloves that suit the kind of weapon that you are looking to run with. Next up at number two on our list, we have magazine size. And boy, oh boy, I cannot tell you how awesome this stat is. It is truly amazing. I managed to find a magazine that increased my um, magazine size by 30% or nearly 30%. Uh, this is just tremendous. You know, first of all, it's a huge increase in base DPS because obviously you are putting out more rounds per minute because you have less need to reload. But the really transformative aspect of this is in your ability to burst down and Opponent. So both in PvE settings, when you are shooting an enemy, very often you'll empty your clip and they'll still have a little bit of life left. You have to go behind cover, you have to reload, maybe that enemy will move and then they'll reposition, you won't be able to get to them that enemy is still up. Having more bullets in the chamber, or, or in your clip I should say, allows you to burst that enemy down and finish off the job. Now obviously in PvP settings though, this is just magic. Obviously if you can fire more bullets into your enemy than they can fire into you before you both have to reload, again, you are more likely going to win that encounter. So it's a huge stat in both PvE settings and PvP settings. It has a massive increase on your sheet DPS and it also has a huge, huge impact on your effective DPS in both PvE settings and PvP settings. You should definitely prioritize this stat very, very highly. Finally, at number one on our list, we have weapon damage. Now, let's be clear about what this is and how it works. Weapon damage is an increase on the base damage on your weapon. It's not like you get to get all these other stat bonuses from everywhere else and then this wax on top of it for an exponential increase. No, it is a base. It is an increase in the base damage on your weapon, which is a set value that is, that is then added to all of the other increases that you'll see on your weapon. So this is a fantastic stat. It is straight up bonus damage, which is fantastic. Fantastic. And in particular, it's really great at the early stages of the game when our gear levels are quite low. Over time, crit and headshot damage and critical hit damage will start to overtake the relative value of this stat. But for now, this is a, just a fantastic straight up damage boost that I would really recommend you chase at the early stages of the game. So that's it, guys. That's the top 10 list of stats that you should be prioritizing as we move into the launch of the game. Uh, obviously, these stats will change with time, so use with caution. And obviously, as we've already called out, a lot of these values are going to change depending on the type of weapon that you are running 
running with or your playstyle. So adapt those as necessary. But I really hope that you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like uh, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. There are plenty more Division videos on the way, specifically about how to get the most out of the weapons that you are using. If you're into that sort of stuff, stick around. Thanks for sticking with us for, what, 14 and a half minutes. Appreciate your time and uh, look forward to seeing you guys in the Dark Zone. Take care. Bye-bye.